Okay, in this video, we are gonna find a definite integral by taking the limit of a Riemann sum. In this one, the integrand is gonna be a cubic, and that, in my experience, is pretty much the worst one that you'll do by hand. So let's get into it and be done with it. So we wanna do the integral from negative two to one of x cubed minus one dx. Every one of these problems starts the same way. We have to find delta x, and we have to find x sub i. So delta x is b minus a over n, so that's going to be 1 minus negative 2 over n, or 3 over n. Um, and then x sub i is a, which is negative 2 in our case, plus i times delta x. And we just found delta x was 3 over n. So x sub i is going to be a plus i delta x. And we can rewrite that as negative 2 plus 3i over n. All right, so let's see if we can do this. We're going to write down kind of our general idea. So the definite integral is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of all the rectangles that we can find. And the rectangles have a height of f of x sub i and a base of delta x. So it's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum from 1 to, infin uh, 1 to n, rather. So from the first rectangle to the nth. The height is f of x sub i. And then delta x. All right, so now it's substituting time. Limit is n approaches infinity, sum from 1 to n. All right, so we need to find f of x sub i. So f of x is the integrand, so it's x cubed minus 1. x sub i is negative 2 plus 3i over n. So every x that we see in the integrand, we're going to replace with negative 2 plus 3i over n. Uh, all right, and it's cubed, so that's going to be awesome. We got this. And then don't forget those constants. That's like the main thing that people forget when they do this. Like that minus one has nothing to do with x sub i, but it still needs to be there because we're doing f of x sub i. So it's really like we have x sub i cubed minus one. So that minus one is there. Also, don't forget your delta x. I mean, if you forget the delta x at the end, you'll just have a problem that you'll, you'll realize pretty quickly you forgot delta x. Um, but if you forget that minus one, uh, you just won't notice at all. So make sure you're not forgetting it. All right, we gotta close the summation, close the limit. Now, we've gotta cube this thing. Also, cubing this thing is like not super easy, so still don't forget the minus one at the end, which is what people do all the time. All right, so to cube something, it's you use kind of the third row of Pascal's triangle, so it's one, three, three, one, and then it's the first, so it's one times the first thing cubed, which is negative eight, times the second thing to the zero. So it's one first thing cubed, second thing to the zero. And then it's plus three, first thing squared, second thing to the first. So the first thing is negative two. Square it, you get four. And then the second thing to the first is just three i over n. And then it's plus three, first thing to the first power, second thing squared. So it's gonna be plus three um, times negative two, and then times nine i squared over n squared. And then finally it's, plus one, um, first thing to the zero power, so it's not even gonna show up, and then second thing to the third power. So I'm gonna end up with plus 27 i cubed over n cubed. And then don't forget minus one, and then don't forget delta x. So there we go. And then we close the summation, we close the limit. All right, so that's like by far the hardest part of this. And now it's like collecting like terms and working with summations. And also there's some weird foghorn going off in the background. I don't know if the mic is picking it up. Um, all right, so as n goes to infinity, uh, it's still a summation. Uh, let's see, so I'm gonna add up these and these. So negative eight minus one is negative nine times three over n, so negative 27 over n. I'm gonna factor that out because it doesn't depend on i. So negative 27 over n and then the sum from one to n of just one. And now I'm gonna keep going with that. So nothing else on the inside actually combines. So I end up with uh, that next term, three times four times three is uh, three times four times three. And then, okay, so three times four times three is 36. And then I have to multiply by three over n. So that's 108 over n squared. So I'm gonna take out 108 over n squared and then I'm left with the sum of just i. So that's all from the i term and distributing delta x to it. And now I'm gonna, so that's the sum of i. Uh, the next one is, so I'm dealing with the i squared term and I'm distributing delta x. So it's 
3 times 3 is 9, times 9 is 81, times negative 2 is negative 162 over n cubed. So I'm going to take out negative 162 over n cubed, and then it's the sum of um, i squared, and then the i cubed, so we got 27 times 3 is 81 over n to the fourth. I'm going to take that out, and then it's the sum of i cubed. All right, and close that limit. All right, so that was kind of annoying, but it's just algebra stuff, so not the end of the world. And here we got to think about all of our summation. So negative 27 over n, the sum from 1 to n of 1 is just n. So we get negative 27 over n times n. So here's n plus 108 over n squared. I need the sum of i. So you can kind of see as you do these problems, it's really important that you have memorized these formulas. Um, yeah, you honestly don't use them that much, so it's like when you're learning this, you use them, um, and you make sure you review them, but once you're done with it, you can kind of let them go. I mean, it depends on the class you're in, uh, but in my class, we use them here, and then they kind of don't come up that much again. And then here, I need the sum of i squared, so i squared is um, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 2 times 3, or over 6. So sum of i squared n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6, and then plus 81 over n to the fourth. And this one, I've always thought it was really interesting that the sum of i cubed is the formula for the sum of i cubed is actually just the square of the formula for the sum of i, which I'm sure there's some deep geometric reason for, but I've never actually seen it. So this thing is going to be n squared quantity n plus 1 squared over 2 squared, which is 4. And all right, now we just have to uh, take our limit. Oh, I forgot to write limit at the beginning of this. this is, we're taking the limit of this thing. Oh, that's terrible. Sorry, but I forgot to write it, and I'm not going to go back and put it in. We're going to take the limit of this thing. So, um, but I did, I closed the parentheses for it, so that's good. Uh, all right, so negative 27 for the first thing. For the second thing, we have uh, second degree here. We have second degree here, so it's just the ratio of the coefficient, the leading coefficient, so 108 over 2 is 54. And then for the next one, basically if this doesn't work out where you get third degree and third degree, second degree and second degree, fourth and fourth, you've done something wrong. So you kind of know. It's nice you get like this little hint. All right, so the other thing here when you're dealing with the sum of i squared, people always forget that it's 2n plus 1 in that numerator, so there's an extra factor of 2. So when we take the limit, we'll get negative 162 times 2 over 6. So that's negative 162 over 3, which is actually just 54 again, so minus 54. And then for the final thing, we get a fourth degree here. If you expand the numerator of this, you actually get another fourth degree. So leading coefficients are 81 and 4, so we'll just get 81 over 4. And then if we clean this up, the 54s cancel. And we get, uh, what, negative, I don't know, negative 108 over 4 plus 81 over 4. So negative 27 over 4. So that's our answer. And what we evaluated was this. From negative 2 to 1 of x cubed minus 1 dx is negative 27 over 4. All right. So it's a pretty good example with a cubic. I hope you found this helpful. And good luck.